This is the second in a series of three videos discussing how to use the Swing Catalyst Force Plate to evaluate and improve the transition part of the swing. In this video, we're going to talk about evaluating and improving horizontal force. Let's get started with a reminder from the first video in the series. Transition takes place between lead arm parallel to the ground in the backswing and lead arm parallel to the ground in the downswing. Next, I'll share a few things that I like to observe to evaluate the way that a player is managing horizontal force. The first thing I'll look at when I look at horizontal force is timing. I'm looking to see whether or not max horizontal force is occurring right around the top of the backswing. After that I look to see what the maximum force that the player generates is and I want to see if it matches their overall swing style. Having looked at max force, I like to look at minimum force. I want to see that a player's maximum force is offset by their minimum force and that there's balance between the two. Now that we've talked about evaluating horizontal force in transition, let's talk about improving it. We're going to discuss three different ways of doing so by helping a player create space to have an efficient shift in transition. First, as many of us have learned from Mike Adams and the rest of the Ultimate Golf Lesson team, the easiest way to improve a player's use of horizontal force is to work with their stance width. When you give it thought, it makes sense. Stance width creates boundaries for shifting. I cannot say this emphatically enough. This idea is very simple, and therefore it's easy to overlook. Do not fall into that trap. In the swing on the left, my stance width is so narrow that I have very little room to generate horizontal force and don't produce much at all. In the swing on the right, my stance width is far too wide for me, so I do shift, but then because I can't reach my front side, I stabilize and simply slap at the ball, and my lower body crumbles, leading to a second shift. So it's a highly inefficient motion. Helping a player identify their ideal stance width for each part of the bag, for example, wedges, short irons, vibrids versus tee shots, produces astonishing results. Now let's move on to discuss the second and third ideas as both use the backswing to create the space to generate horizontal force in transition. I described the strategy I used in this swing as a swing that shifted to the right and I described the strategy I used in this swing as a swing that rocked to the right. In both cases, I've created a lot of space. I have room to move from where I am to a place significantly to the left by the time transition is over. In the swing on the left, we're going to see that my belt buckle really doesn't go up much as I swing back. In the swing on the right, the belt buckle raises up significantly. As a result of moving my center of mass to the right without coming up much, I've retained the thoracic bend at the top of the swing in this example. In this example, I've moved my center of mass both right and a bit up while keeping the top of the spine centered, and that resulted in losing my thoracic bend. In fact, I'm probably leaning towards the target in this example. When I think of the idea of creating space in the backswing to generate horizontal force, I think of two great Ryder Cup captains. While I'm not going to be mistaken for being Peter Jacobson doing great swing imitations anytime soon, this style is my imitation of copying Curtis Strange's backswing, and this style is my imitation of Colin Montgomery's backswing. While the moves are certainly very different, they both take advantage of the idea of creating space in the backswing to leave room to have a meaningful horizontal shift in the transition. Let's wrap it up with a quick recap of some of the main points. When evaluating horizontal force, look for that peak timing. When do they peak their horizontal force? We're hoping that's at the top of the swing, so right in the middle of transition. Look for the values. Does their maximum force match their style? Look for the minimum force, meaning do the gas and the brakes offset each other nicely? Is there a balance there? When it comes to improving horizontal force in transition, we've given you three ideas. The first of these ideas is quite simple. Help a player identify their ideal stance widths for each part of their bag. Don't overlook the simplest solution just because it seems too simplistic. Then we moved on to discuss two ways of creating space in the backswing. There was shifting. There was rocking. Both leave room so that the player can ramp up and apply horizontal force in transition. In the third and final video in this series, we're going to talk about one more idea to help players improve horizontal force, and we're going to talk about ways they can improve their vertical force as well.